so thanks so much for inviting me to come and talk about your work. Um, it's really lovely to be here and to see this exhibition that you've assembled and to see, I think, some threads and connections from your previous work that I've known over almost 20 years mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder, maybe we can start by just talking through some of the, mm -hmm. some of the works that are here. Um, which would you like to, which should we start with? Well, you know, should we start with the oldest? Because there's the three, uh, the triptych of the triple exposures mm -hmm. go back quite a long way. They go back 20 years or more, 23 years or something. The physical aspect of the photograph, I really like that, that kind of vague, the softness and the, um, the texture, the grainy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The grainy vagueness. But there's something you were saying about like a happy accident, mm -hmm. and we were speaking earlier as well about this idea of the of finding the sublime in mm -hmm. the prosaic or in the everyday. Mm -hmm. That that's something that I think that you do in lots of different ways. Like you find um, the kind of object, the a, like a soulful object, um, or an object that has. Um, some kind of extra meaning attached to it and it's usually because that object has been handled or has a story or a narrative whether mm -hmm. you know it or not mm -hmm. actually maybe if we move on then to um to the works that are related to the story that's printed behind mm -hmm. me which i think is super interesting it's very compelling and i think it also contains some of those threads that we talked about um in terms of it's a story it's a it's a story of politics that's related yeah. to gender, that's related to like economics, that's to do with the way that people um, live in a political sense, but it also is like a human story. Mm. Um, right? Yeah, I mean, this amazing story about this group of women <clears throat> who lived in the in the Kara. Um, and I think probably they weren't the only women. It wasn't that only that wasn't the only place. I think it was happening in maybe other parts of Ireland too, where they were sort of outside, they lived outside of the community and almost formed a, a commune-like existence where they looked after each other's children. And um, But they lived wild. They lived in burrows and nests. And um, But the, the women in the car, uh, they served as soldiers. They, were, they would go in and out of the barracks to make money and... Anyway, it's a it's a really really fascinating story, but and and again on so many different layers because of the history, because of the women's history and the politics involved, but also because of that feral, the feral thing about living in the living outside of normality, mm -hmm. living literally outside in the wild has always been really fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. Um, description of them living in this, living in the bushes, living mm. in nests, like they mm. call them, and the women were called wrens. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's works that are related to that, yeah. Um, that are kind of looking at that interplay between the social, the political, the yeah. military, and then this like idea of like wildness or a, yeah, 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 yeah. So the the, the smaller piece, the piece with the, the big heavy lump of concrete, mm -hmm. the reason I wanted to use the big lump of concrete because it, it, it was sort of evocative of the grimness of <clears throat> that sort of era, even walking around the fort here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> those, that old concrete has a, a very kind of particular feel. Like a brutal it. kind yeah. of, a, yeah. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> the, um, um, the, the mosaic, the tiling on the top, Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the willow pattern is okay. sort of suggestive of the society that okay. they were ostracized or they were they weren't ostracized in lots of ways I think they probably chose not to be part of that but whatever anyway that mm -hmm. was <clears throat> that's kind of um, suggestive of that mm -hmm. because there's a narrative of like the broken woman yeah. it's like a Victorian yeah. narrative that people yeah. liked to imagine like a country girl that had like known mm. sexual mm. congress, whatever, and then was left by her lover yeah. and became like a broken thing yeah. or like a yeah. like a like a discarded thing. Yeah. 
So I think that, yeah, there's something about the way these fragments or these like collected fragments yeah. become yeah. something else when they're put together. Mm-hmm. I think that there, you have a real eye for those objects, for the like, I, I mean, I suppose there's a conceptual link between them, but this eye for the broken or the, mm. the discarded mm. that we mentioned before, that's just like threaded through the work. So there are images that are just like taking these like, again, kind of soulful or very beautiful, um, but used and like yeah. damaged in some way, yeah. these objects and like um, stripping away the background of them yeah. and just like highlighting their like quirky kind of beauty. Mm. And there's something as well about that that's like a, um, there's like references obviously to like the absurd or to surrealism or to like different connections between things taking some of these broken objects and placing them into a different relationship with other objects um that i think is super interesting but also like a reference to like the victorian cabinet of curiosities Mm. or like just like a i think it's partly about the practice of collecting Mm. as well that you're a person who your prac your artistic practice is threaded through your life in a way that you're always looking for those objects for those moments and you're kind of collecting them up and mm. assembling them I think there's something about like the box or the dollhouse or like it's like this little world that you have complete control over in a way mm. but I feel like for one thing your works are more they're more porous than that they're more kind of open to other Influences, or they're actually literally more open than yeah, that for like, the most part. We're right in front of yeah. some boxes, but <laughs> yeah, but they are open. They're also open, yeah. And um, I definitely wanted them to be like open, mm-hmm. so that and they're also. I mean, there's a darkness about <clears throat> about that piece, which I wouldn't ever have really got from Joseph Cornell's work. But this, mm-hmm. this is, you know, it's to do with children being lost in the forest, and it's like. Mm-hmm. It's called Tales from Dogwood, so it's sort of about the the darkness of some fairy tales. So maybe maybe we could think a little bit more, go a little deeper into the object that you've selected, that you've you've made like a color field, and these particular objects are their backgrounds are stripped away and they're placed just on like a colored mm-hmm. background, <clears throat> um, like a plain colored background. Do you want to talk a little bit about? why these particular objects or something about the specifics yeah well again it's about the collection it's about finding an object and the object becoming meaningful because of the place and the moment in in which it was found apart from the little cow I got on eBay I suppose but even (laughs) then that, that has its own meaning but the two horses have a meaning and they're broken and they're old and they have particular beauty because of that because Mm -hmm. of their brokenness and their age and stripping them of everything else and putting them on a very very bright vibrant Mm -hmm. color is like a kind of a clash of of the two of the image and the background in a way that sort of brings the image out and is a is a sort of a juxtaposition in a kind of a way as well. And it's, sorry, sorry, go ahead. And and the tank, the empty tank, was just <clears throat> a random thing of beauty that happened on the kitchen table. That um, it was it was an empty fish tank that I'd been mending and filled it full of water to see if it leaked, and then took a photograph of it because it was almost glowing on the table and then when I looked at it more closely there was so much going on in it and yet all it was was an empty tank I mean empty of fish it was full of water but there was nothing in the water it was just glass and water Yeah. and yet when you look at it it's so textured yeah it's the colour is extremely rich but I think again what what I see happening in these is that these objects, these humble kind of objects or everyday objects are somehow being elevated mm. or are being yeah, um, that's what are I was trying to say. Being highlighted or are being and, and then you start <laughs> to build 
like a narrative, particularly like the toys, mm -hmm. the horses, like you build a kind of narrative around those or like the Velveteen Rabbits, like something that's been like <laughs> played yeah. with and becomes alive somehow or yeah. is like a, yeah. um, is more than somehow more than yeah. the object. Yeah. It carries with it a whole set of stories or mm. narratives that you, you start to spin mm. out in your mm. mind or mm. imagine. I mean, there's so much in the work that we haven't even touched on because it is so layered. And I wonder if you could maybe talk about some of the things to do with um, that are like pushing at this idea of binaries. So they're pushing mm -hmm. at or trying to maybe erode the difference the between, between yeah. right between binaries around gender or around yeah. this idea of divisions between animal and human. Yeah, any kind of kind of identity mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that has a a boundary to it and playing around with those boundaries and imagining if we if we were more able <clears throat> to be free mm -hmm. of all those dividing lines and we could choose to be to identify in any way we wanted as anything or who any, any, anybody we wanted to identify as and the animal human thing has always been a, a, of big interest to me through my life I think because mm -hmm. I was always really into animals mm -hmm. and <clears throat> so the crow it was a pet crow that I had that I was very close to and I'm very interested in, um, you know, the Philip Pullman, ch the children, the, the elements that come up in children's stories and the Philip Pullman demons, mm -hmm. you know, where each child has a, or each person has an animal, mm -hmm. which is very directly related to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of psyche. I think that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. and so that's, that's one of the little threads that runs through it all as well. Mm -hmm. And it, there's a, there can be a darkness to that too. I think it also, this idea of the, the, the erosion of the human-animal divide or of the kind of gender divide, it sort of sits with something that's in the work as well that's about, um, it's about dignity and it's about returning dignity or recognizing the dignity in the other. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah. And the respect. Mm -hmm. Respect for for everything, whether it's whole or broken or different, other or yeah. Thanks so much. That was <laughs> great. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Good stuff <done> now. <laughs>